Can we talk about this exercise, please? And maybe even stop doing it, depending upon what the other exercise you're doing in your program. You see, when it comes to training triceps, there's three heads that you want to train. The medial, lateral, and then the long head. The long head is the big, meaty one that's actually responsible for the most size of your arm, so you're going to have to train it. Now, when it comes to the triceps, the function of the medial lateral head is simply to extend the elbow. So if you have an extended elbow, you fully contracted those two heads. If you have a flexed elbow, you fully stretched those two heads. The same can be said for the long head too, except its attachment is actually unique and is back here on the shoulder blade. If I want to fully flex that head of the triceps, it's not just an extended elbow, but it has to also be back behind the body. Well, what exercises do things like this? Obviously a bench dip, a tricep dip, maybe a dumbbell kickback, those are going to fully shorten the tricep long head. To fully stretch the long head, I don't just need a flexed elbow, but I need this arm to be up overhead, right? Opposite of the extension of the shoulder, I got to get in shoulder flexion. So we go back to this exercise. Why are you doing it? Because what a lot of people will do is check the box for saying that I'm getting a good stretch on my tricep long head here because my arms are up, but not really. You see, there's nothing really wrong with the exercise if you want to do it for its sole purpose, and that for me is to load the damn weight up, use a little bit of momentum, and involve your core so that you can actually overload this medial and lateral head exercise because that's all it's doing. It's not doing an effective job on building up the long head, which again is responsible for most size. So what do you do instead? First of all, change the angle of where you have the cable. Stop going so high and put it more at about waist level. Take the rope, get in position, and I'm going to step out, okay? And I want to get a good solid base. And this is where people miss a great opportunity with this back foot. You drive yourself into the ground with a good solid base here, and then you lock yourself in place by driving up into plantar flexion. I'm going fully up on my toes, and I'm not even working here to hold this. This is not like an active calf extension. I'm actually locking my midfoot in place and using it to stabilize me into the ground. Because most people would say, oh, it's too hard for me to hold, especially if I was flat footed. And I agree, your core is not going to hold that. But when you lock in place here, you're good to go. Now your elbows here are going to stay pointed straight ahead. And what's nice about this variation of this exercise, rather than let's say a dumbbell, is that I'm not getting that internal torsion that happens when you have a dumbbell in your hands. In other words, with the dumbbell in my hands like this, I'm getting a rotation component that can be uncomfortable for people in this position because you get some of that impingement stress. I don't have that. I have my elbows this way out, so I have a really good comfortable exercise as far as that goes. But now, when I get in position here, I now, because of the lower angle of the cable, have a good stretch on that long head. You could feel that. You could see it. I don't have a shoulder that's down here, right? Watch the shoulder angle from here. When I'm in here, where's that shoulder angle? In relation to my torso, if I were to stand upright, it's not very flexed at all. It's about 90 degrees. That's not enough to elicit a good strong stretch on the tricep long head. Contrast that to when I come in here and I'm in this position, where's that shoulder now? That's adequately stretching that tricep long head because I'm up here in flexion by another 30, 40 degrees. Okay, from here now, this is key. When I extend, I want to stay as upright as I possibly can. I want to open my chest as I go up. Here, right, just like that. Because you want to note the direction of the cable in relation to the forearm. If I can keep this cable as perpendicular as I possibly can to that forearm, it's going to be impossible to be completely perpendicular, but if I can get it as perpendicular as I can by staying up tall, I'm going to put maximum tension on the triceps in this fully extended position. Contrast that once again with what's happening here. When I go here and I go out, what's happening? Look at the relationship of that cable and my forearm. They're almost parallel to each other. There's not a lot of tension when that happens on the working muscle. Now, when you grab these ropes, I see a lot of people grab them like this. Okay, what that does is it influences or kind of incentivizes you at the top to kind of let the weight pull yourself back into what we call radial deviation, down that way, never fully extending the elbow. If instead I grab the ropes underneath like this, here, so my hands are facing out, when I do the exercise and I get to the top, here, I could fully extend. My wrists are extended, and with that, neurologically we activate the full extension pattern of the elbow, which means I get fully locked out. 
Anybody that ever did any tricep exercise where they didn't really fully lock out the elbow never quite felt the full contraction. But when you have it like this, you accessorize that basic extension of the elbow joint because you're getting extension of the wrist. They're sort of paired together neurologically. So if I can get that full extension at the wrist, I'm going to get an easier extension at the elbow. Finally, when I get in this position here and I'm up at the top like this, you might question, well, that's really difficult, Jeff. I don't have the shoulder mobility to get myself up here with that good stretch, right? Well, yes, you do. Because if I were to just pull these down to my shoulders and press up, this is the end position of a shoulder press. I think we all or most of us have the mobility in our shoulders to do an overhead shoulder press. I'm not asking for anything that's more than you probably already have. It's just that you never really felt that level of stretch applied to that exercise because you've been doing too much of this for too long. And again, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with this if you're going to do it to really load the weight up and drive a lot of tension through the triceps because it's more of a momentum-based exercise. But when you want to have an impact on the tricep long head, you better get this thing to the position to actually get your arm up and apply that stretch to be able to get that. And again, complement that with some of the exercises that put you in that fully contracted or fully shortened position of the long head too, where your arm is back behind your body to fully complement your workout. Far too many people check the box, try some long head stretch exercise. No, it's not. Pick something better. If you want to learn how to do a face pull properly, because it's another one people screw up, make sure you click this video here to watch that. Also, how to properly do a dumbbell one arm row. You can watch that here. Guys, all of our complete programs available at athletemass.com. If you haven't done so, click subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.